We got 11th, we got 16th, we got 18 people. And we're recording. Nice. For once. <laughs> so smile, Annalie. Good morning, everybody. We'll give you everybody a minute to get present. I realize I don't have a church in the background. Sorry, Dale Runners. I'll talk it up for next time. I bet John Pratt has some pictures mm -hmm. of Go Run that he's taken. I'm sure. Oh, um, yes. More people. More people. Yeah. Up to 84. Wow. That's, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, friends, we welcome you this morning for joining us again for worship. We are so happy to be together. Bethany, Doran, and Unionville again. Um, as last week was a little bit unusual, we had Holy Humor Sunday, and um, this week we're celebrating the story of Doubting Thomas, and a little bit unusual again, so. Yes, um, unusual in that last week, Annalie had gotten sick suddenly and was not able to join for worship, and I, I was on a scheduled break. And it just so happens that this morning I woke up not feeling well at all. And um, I'm doing my best to be present right now, but I, it may uh, be necessary for me to step away because um, I'm, I'm not feeling well um, at this moment. Um, I'm going to... Um... <laughs> Ooh muster up all the, the wellness I can for right now. Um, if, uh, if there is a little bit of a gap, I, I apologize, but I am not feeling well this morning. So we're gonna make do with what we're working with and we're encouraging young me to do what she needs to do to take care of her body as we would anybody else in our congregations. So we're gonna work with what we got and if you'll join us, we're gonna begin the worship service. Do you have anything else you want to add, ladies? Good to be with you all. And young me, do what you need to do. We got this. Okay. Um, do we want to start with deep breathing? Yes. Yes. Um, I invite you now to, to close your eyes if that helps you, to get comfortable in your chairs, Relax your shoulders, relax your neck, and take in a deep cleansing breath. And take in another deep cleansing breath. On your third inhale, roll your shoulders up and back and down and with your exhale cherish all of life that has been given to us as a gift this morning and with that let's begin our worship And I will ask for your feedback um, as I was having some trouble um, moving through the slides on my computer. I think um, my little computer has been working so hard lately that it might, <laughs> it might need an upgrade. But friends, we are in Easter tide and Jesus is not in the tomb. Amen.
Can everyone see that? No? No. Nope. Okay, so we are leaving. We are leaving that mode. Do you want me to do it for mine? We'll just, how about okay. this? Okay. okay. All right. Friends, please join me in our call to worship. What a great day this is. It is a joy to be here today. Jesus Christ is risen and is alive within and among us. Praise God for the glorious gift of God's Son. That was Jean Chamberlain from Bethany Presbyterian. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Jean. Friends, 
This is a strange time that we gather together in a form that we're not used to showing up instead of in our church buildings and our old beautiful church buildings. We're at home where we get interrupted by illness and pets and distractions like having a cup of coffee beside you. And so children and children, children. all of these these things that are different than they used to be and our technology fails us and we get frustrated and a lot of us aren't at our best when we're dealing with economic scarcity and stress of many different kinds. So if you'll join me, we'll read our call. Well, we'll read our call to confession together. We listen to the news. Read the newspapers and wonder if peace will ever reign in your world, Lord. Some are angry and all are fearful. Today we join with the disciples in that hidden place where they also wondered about peace and hope. As they doubted and struggled, you broke through. You dispelled the darkness and they were astonished again. Help us to trust that you will bring peace to each one of us. Forgive us and renew our minds to embrace the impossible as possible. Give us the courage to reach out to you and touch our hearts once again. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Open your hearts and your minds, beloved people of God. Grace finds us where we are, but is not content to leave us there. You are loved, forgiven, and called to be disciples. Accept God's peace. Our beautiful affirmation of faith comes to us from the Iona community. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. Gabby. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present. And his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and eternal life. Amen. Amen. Our scripture today comes from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father had sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. Annalie? A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Pray for me <laughs> as I try to, to proclaim the good word. Let's pray together. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, help me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am more. Precious Lord, lead me forth. Amen. 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 In April 2017, a passenger on an overbooked United Airlines flight at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport was forcibly removed from his seat and the airplane, resulting in a concussion, a broken nose, and two missing teeth. Now, unless you were living under a rock, you saw the viral video, or at least heard of the video that other passengers took of Dr. David Dow screaming through his bloody face, as he was dragged off the plane. While other passengers looked on in horror, none of the United Airlines crew or employees did anything to help. Simon Sinek, famous author and public speaker, who, is, who primarily speaks to large organizations on leadership development, was once boarding a United Airlines flight and tells of his experience witnessing the treatment of someone who tried to board before his group number was called, which everyone who travels knows is a felony. And that is exactly how the gate agent treated him, like a felon. Step aside, sir, I haven't called your group. Could you please step aside and wait your turn? So Cynic spoke up, he asked her, why do you have to talk to us like that? Why can't you talk to us like human beings? She looked Cynic right in the eyes and said, sir, if I don't follow the rules, I could get into trouble or lose my job. What she was really telling him was that she didn't feel safe in her own company to speak up or question superiors and her leaders didn't trust her to use her common sense to do the job for which she was trained. 
United Airlines had become a culture of fear. And that is ultimately a failure of leadership. The company spokesperson said, this event was a wake up call. And they immediately implemented changes in policies and customer service oriented training for all frontline employees. But a year later in May, 2018, a United Airlines attendant insisted that a family's puppy be placed in his carrier in the overhead bin for the duration of a three and a half hour flight. The puppy died of suffocation and no other attendant questioned or spoke out or used their common sense. I think it's safe to say that the policy changes and employee training did not get at the heart of their problem. They put all the training into the frontline employees, but what training did their managers and executives receive? The culture of United Airlines forbid doubting, questioning, and contradicting rules that didn't make sense. Employees didn't feel safe speaking out or making independent decisions. To do so was to invite punishment and retaliation from the higher ups. This was a leadership problem and it had to have existed for a long time to create such a fear-based organization. Now every year on the second Sunday after Easter, the common lectionary includes the story of Thomas. Every Easter, the Christian church proclaims the impossible message that Jesus is risen from the dead. And for those of us who grew up in the church, listening to and celebrating these impossible stories year after year, well, we don't really question them, not out loud anyway. And even if some of us have questions, we quietly accept them as part of our faith tradition. Just like Thomas, there are people who question out loud. Along with every single woman mentioned in the Gospels, Thomas is my hero because he dared to question, dared to question out loud. He dared to question all the other disciples. He dared to own his unbelief without apology, without embarrassment. And he dared to voice exactly what he would need in order to believe. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the marks of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. These are bold and courageous words from a bold and courageous man. I believe there are people in the church who identify with Thomas and his questions, but feel afraid to speak out for fear, fear of being judged a doubter fear of losing status or the sense of belonging within their community. How sad that some of our churches have nurtured a culture of fear. The other disciples, the story tells us, had already seen the risen Jesus. Jesus appeared to them and gave them two things. First, his peace, his shalom, my peace I give to you. And second, he breathed on them and gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit, which endowed them with authority. But for whatever reason, when Jesus appeared before the huddled and frightened disciples, Thomas wasn't with them. We don't know why he wasn't there. Maybe he was the only brave one among them to go out and get food for everyone. Maybe he was concerned about his family. We don't know. But Jesus appeared to them while he was out. So Thomas was only asking for what the other disciples had already received. This is not an unreasonable request. A full week goes by before Jesus shows up again. I wonder how the others treated Thomas during that week. Did they treat Thomas differently? Did they suddenly go silent in conversation whenever Thomas came near? What was Thomas like during that week? I suspect the inquisitive Thomas 
peppered the others with questions. Well, when Jesus shows up a week later, instead of lecturing Thomas about his lack of faith, instead of shaming him in front of the other disciples to make an example of him, instead of creating a culture of fear, Jesus gives Thomas exactly what he needs to believe. Jesus invites Thomas to explore and investigate for himself the physical evidence of Jesus's body. And true to Thomas's words, after he touched Jesus's wounds on his hands and on his side, Thomas believed saying, my Lord and my God. In those words said out loud, I could hear both his belief and disbelief. It is Jesus who gives Thomas what he needs to believe. And then Jesus says, do not doubt, but believe. But in my opinion, I think that's a bad translation. In the Greek, Jesus says to Thomas, do not be unbelieving but believe. And I suspect the tone was a comforting tone, almost like he was saying, see, Thomas, now that you've seen for yourself, you can believe and trust now. It's okay to trust now. The Greek word for faith or believe is pistos, and it means to trust. Now that you have seen, you can trust. Now, Thomas needed to see Jesus. He asked for and needed his own experience of Jesus. And that is what we all need to believe. We all need our own experience of Jesus. And by his peace and by the Holy Spirit, that is exactly what Jesus offers us so that we can believe too, so that we can trust that God makes all things possible, even the impossible. Now, as Presbyterians, we believe that faith is a gift from God through the Holy Spirit. It's not something we're born with or we earn. Faith, belief, trust in God, is a gift from God. The gift of God is not the same for all, and they're not all received at the same time. For some, like Thomas, it takes a little longer. And faith, like intelligence, needs to be nurtured in an environment where it is safe to be curious, to wonder, to doubt, to ask questions, to ask for what we need, and did I mention ask questions? <laughs> lots and lots of questions out loud. The story of Thomas teaches us that asking questions is a good and necessary thing. It belongs in the church. It belongs in Christian education and faith formation. And people who have deep, profound, and complicated questions not only belong in the church, their questions and their courage are necessary in the church. Thomas is the patron saint of India. Thomas's faith in the risen Christ took him all the way to India where he preached the good news. Now in the year 199, over a thousand years before the first Catholic missionaries landed in Korea, an Indian princess married King Suro of Kaya, who is buried in Kim He, South Korea. She was said to be a Christian in the church founded by Thomas the Apostle. On one of the decorated gates in the precinct of the king's tomb, there is a faint but obvious image of fish and loaves of bread and a cup. The Christian church today would look very different without Courageous Thomas. May we all be brave enough to ask our questions, 
ask for what we need in order to believe. And by doing so, create a culture of trust and safety that is worthy of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. I did it. I got you through did. it. <laughs> Amen, sister. You were awesome. Amen. Shall we go back to screen sharing? Do you want me to do it or do you want to do it? Um, and Lee, if you would take it from here, I uh, will pass. Sure, what could on. possibly go wrong? <laughs> here we go. All right, we want to thank um, each and every one of you that continues to send in your offerings to the church. And um, I know a few of you from Unionville have sent in your stimulus money with notes saying that you didn't need it. And I know that not everybody can do that, but for those of you that can and did know that we thank you very, very much. So send those offerings into the church and so that we can continue uh, the good work of the church. Would you pray with me, please? Gracious God, we give you thanks for pastors who muddle through technology and illness and still proclaim your word. We give thanks for the collaboration of these sister churches and the good that we can do because we are better together. We give thanks for the children of the church, for our families, for people that just yearn for connection and this is their time to connect with the people they're used to seeing physically every week. Lord, we know in the middle of so many Zoom calls, we get tired and frustrated and technology doesn't always work. But I pray that we continue to worship you every day, finding the sacred in all the little things of beauty all around us. I give thanks for the collaboration with these two other pastors, the ways in which it has brought our churches together and the ways in which it has just gives given sustaining strength to the three of us. Holy One, as three churches come together to worship you, it's impossible for us to know everything that happens to the members of this community in this time. As we are physically distant, Lord, we recognize that each individual is having highs and lows, that there are scarcities we are not aware of, there is abundance we are not aware of, Lord. As this sickness creeps across the country, God, we are affected in ways that we can't necessarily express in a 40-minute worship service, God, but we know that you are present to all of it. Lord, we trust that you will go where you are needed and that you will remind us that you are there, Lord. God, give joy and be with us in our sorrows. We lift up everyone in the variety of experiences that they are having. God, go to the family members, the extended family of our churches who are suffering and abide there with them. Lord, we pray now in the way that you taught us to pray. Our Father, our, father, our Mother, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come. Thy will, will be done. Be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Young me, before you give us the benediction, I just want to say that 
you were phenomenal and fantastic. And I'm so sorry you don't feel well, but I hope that when this is over, you'll rest and take care of yourself this afternoon. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for those words of affirmation. <laughs> Thank you. And friends, this, this is um, a surreal time. And um, I have to say that when I or any member of my family even sneezes, um, I, um, the, the fear and anxiety ri rises up in me. And, um, and I'm sure um, there are many of you who feel the same. Um, and so may this benediction um, speak to you and bring peace to you. To God, to, to the disciples, Jesus appeared and said, peace be with you. His very first words to the frightened disciples, peace be with you. On this Sunday, may God's peace be with you and may the Holy Spirit breathe life to you to your families, to the work that you do. Wash over you with peace and with joy and comfort this day. And may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you until we meet face to face again. Amen. Go in peace, friends. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you, young me. Thank you both. Thank you. I love you guys. Thank you, everybody who joined in, participated. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, all 113 that showed Yay. up that I saw. Woo! Wow. Wow. And just so you know, I have friends all over the country who are asking for the zoom link to join us in worship. So, um, yeah. And hopefully, um, before this is all over, we'll learn how to live stream. <laughs> Baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. Yes. Let's get the three of us. Well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I don't know if you could hear, but I had gotten the chills during the sermon. And so my teeth were chattering. I don't know if you could hear it, but no. Uh, All right. You do I, great. I love you, young me. Love, love you. Love you, Gabby. Love you, Emily. All right. Feel better. <laughs> and thank you, you, all viewers. Let me know what I can do. Let me know how oh, I can help you. You're Pick fine. If you have anything, do whatever. Let me know. Oh, thank you. And I'm going to send you some money through a, an app that my husband. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not worry. It's doing what I need to do. All <laughs> take right. Take care of business. Well, take care of yourself first. Thank you, everybody. Two congregations. Yes, and oh. we'll see everyone at coffee time. Uh, Unionville folks, we're going to be having a happy hour, so check your emails. <laughs> see you soon, Doran. Yes. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.